Hello children, Jungle Jan here. Time for chapter two of our adventures with Cora and Flora. And this one is called the Flight of the Eagle. Last time we left Cora in her cords and Flora in her floral shirt, making their way down the flower strewn path deep into the jungle. In the distance, they could hear the sound of thunder rumbling around the mountains, exotic bird song and the chirping of insects. They could also hear a curious thumping noise coming from up ahead, along with some frustrated muttering. They crept slowly along the path and looked cautiously into a small clearing to see a large eagle stamping on the ground. He held his wings outspread and flapped as he jumped up and down trying to stamp on a mouse, which kept jumping out of the way. Um, hello, said Cora. Ah! Squawked the eagle as the mouse hopped into his burrow and disappeared. He looked up and blinked at the jungle edge, trying to see who had spoken. His eyes worked better at a distance. Flora and Cora stepped into the clearing. Ah, well, hello, said the eagle. The eagle was huge. His wingspan went nearly across the clearing and his talons were made for gripping rather than stamping, which is probably why he wasn't very efficient at catching his dinner. His feathers were all the shades of gold you could imagine, and in the sunlight he positively shone. What are you doing? said Flora. It looks very difficult. I'm trying to catch my dinner, or breakfast, or supper, said the eagle. They're jolly fast, these rodents, and they always seem to know when I'm coming. Well, said Cora, you are a bit hard to miss. I wonder if you could help us. We're looking for the king of the jungle. Ah, the eagle replied. I only know King Snake. He's the big fella around here. It was he who taught me how to stamp on the beetles and things to get something to eat. Is that a very sensible way for you to catch food? asked Flora. I thought eagles were supposed to fly down from on high and land on their prey from above. The eagle shook his head. And all of his feathers rattled like swords in their scabbards. See this, he said pointing to a small patch of brownish feathers on his chest. I had a bit of a crash one day and bent my feathers. King Snake told me it'd be best if I didn't hunt that way anymore. I was bound to crash again and hurt myself. Awfully kind of him. He told me to stamp on things, but I'm, I'm not very good at it. I'm not surprised, said Cora. You're not made that way. Don't you think you'd be better hunting the way you were made to? Well, I made a mistake. And I crashed. I can't go back. Who says? King Snake. Well, I'm not so sure he is the true king, answered Cora. He seems to be a bit unhelpful in the things he says. And in our manuscript, it says that the real king knows we make mistakes and helps us to get free from them. How long has it been since you tried to fly? Asked Flora. Maybe you're better now. Been a long time. Snake said I shouldn't try in case I crash. Don't you want to fly? Oh, said the snake. To feel the wind in my pinions. See the land laid beneath me like a giant map. To go so fast it makes my eyes water. Oh yes, sighed the eagle softly. I'm sure the real king would want you to fly. To be all you can be. Why not try now? He's not one to hold you back. He's kind-hearted, compassionate, coaxed Cora. The eagle raised his beak to the sky, took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and then began to beat his huge wings. The wind from his wings nearly knocked Flora and Cora over. Slowly, beat by beat, he began to rise from the ground higher and higher, till he was high as the treetops, higher and higher, till he was high as the mountains. Cora and Flora could just see him as a little dot against the blue sky, soaring on the wind. Suddenly, he folded his wings to his side and fell out of the sky, back down to the ground. Whoa! And he was there in front of them, his wings folded to his side, like a soldier returning from battle. Ladies, thank you, he bowed his head. I feel restored. How can I serve you? Well, said Cora, looking at the map, we're looking for the king of the jungle who lives in the temple, according to the manuscript. And he's the one who sets us free from being made to feel bad and never does anything wrong. I don't suppose you know, saw where the path goes when you were up there? Actually, I could see everything. 
But you really just need to know where it goes next. This path leads to a gorge, which is impossible to get across unless you can fly. Oh, bother, interrupted Flora. Unless, continued the eagle, you have great courage and are able to cross the rope bridge that spans the chasm. Flora and Cora started picking their things up, ready to go on. I hope you carry on flying, eagle. Thank you for your help. And don't let the snake fool you again. No, I'll look for a better king than one who tricks me, said the eagle. Goodbye. He beat his wings and once more rose into the sky. Keep up and keep your eyes higher. Don't look down. Ooh, that is impressive, he said. Come on, let's go. They walked to the edge of the clearing and followed the path. They climbed steadily uphill until they came out on the side of a mountain. The forest fell away in front of them and there was a huge gorge. On the other side, they could see the path continued. A rickety rope bridge connecting the two. Well, said Flora, I'm afraid of heights. 